Welcome back. In the last episode, we got to level 210 and discussed Legion and Link skills. In this episode, we will talk about bonus damage and fight our first chaos bosses. Finish eating that apple and let's get right into it. It's apple seed. Now that I'm level 210, I want to start doing my chaos bosses. I'm going to need to start optimizing my damage and upgrading my equips. The best way to upgrade your equips is to get them to epic rank. Epic rank is very easy to achieve using almost any cube. If you have multiple bossing meals, you can collect and save up the Meister and Master Craftsman cubes that drop from bosses. Using these cubes which I got for free, and two sets of red cubes which I used the misos I've been accumulating from Ursus and daily bossing, I was able to get all my equips to epic rank. Once they are epic rank, I like to use occult cubes to get the potential stat that I need, which in this case is dex percent. Occult cubes are by far the easiest cubes to get. You can get them just by regularly playing MapleStory. They are given as rewards and can be found in event shops. They are permanent and can be shared with other characters in your world. And just like that, I was able to get all my equips and accessories to 6% dex. With this upgrade, I now have 6k stat, which is a great starting place for me to start chaos bossing. We're also going to readjust our Link skills and Legion to better suit our bossing. I aim to have the most crit damage percent and boss damage percent since my IED and crit rate are already the best it needs to be. I went ahead and created a bossing hyperstat preset. The good thing about hyperstats is that you can have up to 3 presets. However, you do need to pay 2 mil every time you want to swap so keep that in mind. In my opinion, the 2 mil is so little, it's not a big deal at all. I'm working on my inner ability. Inner ability is a great and free way to gain extra stats. Sunny Sunday events sometimes have 50% off inner ability reset, which is very good if you're someone who likes to save up your inner ability points. I was able to get legendary rank, however, I didn't land any good stats and ran out of reset points. If you've been doing Ursus daily as a way to generate income, you can claim the Ursus Defeater King medal, which only requires you to fight Ursus 10 times, and it comes with amazing stats. The Afterlands is also a great questline you can do to obtain 4 permanent totems. I created a guide on how to complete this. Make sure to get these totems if you're someone who has low legion or not a lot of link skills. You'll need all the stats you can get. I'm almost ready to fight the first bosses, Zakum, Hilla, and Pink Bean. Before I do that, I want to mention a few extra ways to boost your damage before a boss fight. These are the buffs you're going to want if you plan on bossing. Legion's Might, which gives 30 attack and magic attack for 30 minutes. You can get this with Legion coins at the Legion shop. Greater Guild's Blessing, which gives 30 attack and magic attack for 30 minutes. You can get these weekly if you're in a guild. Monster Park Potions also grant 30 attack, magic attack, and there's an attack speed version for 30 minutes. You can get these at the Monster Park. Ursus buff is also another great option, especially if you've been doing Ursus daily. It also gives 30 attack and magic attack for 30 minutes. You can also fame someone sitting on a level 250 or level 275 chair for attack and magic attack buff. The level 275 chair gives you 50 attack and magic attack, so definitely fame a level 275 chair sitter. There are other amazing buffs you can get like MVP buff if you like to spend NX cash or Onyx apples if you're married. But since we're creating a low funding bossing meal, we won't be worrying about all those unique buffs you can get. The buffs I mentioned are accessible to every player making it perfect for anyone who is a beginner. Remember that buffs will disappear if you're unalived, so make sure to buy buff freezers. Buff freezers save your buffs when you're unalived. That includes double EXP coupons. If you're mechanically good enough to survive during your weekly bossing, you can save your misos and skip on these. But I always like to spend the extra misos to make sure my damage stays optimized and my bossing meal experience is as smooth as possible. I like to buy 4 to 5 for my weekly bossing runs. Now it's time to take on the first boss, starting with Zaku.
All right, and that was Chaos Zakum. That was a lot easier than I thought, to be honest, and the toughest part of this fight is really just the arms, which is how it usually goes. Okay, on to the next boss, which is Hard Hilla. <laughs> And just like that, we defeated Hardhilla. Hardhilla has a chance to drop a 30 day pet, and so if you're lucky, you can get one of those. Okay, and on to the last fight, which is Pink Bean. Honestly, this fight's not that hard, it's just annoying because he keeps inflicting like statuses on you, which makes it annoying, but it's actually not that hard of a boss fight. I just want to quickly show you guys my stats as well as the buffs that I'm using and what my equipment looks like right now at the conclusion of this episode. As you can see, it is very simple to create a bossing mule and it took us very little effort to get to where we are right now. And that concludes this episode. We were able to defeat Chaos Zakum, Hard Hilla, and Chaos Pink Bean. Next time we see each other, I'll continue progressing through to level 220 and fight Chaos Root Abyss to reach the next milestone in our bossing mule journey. You won't want to miss out.